trying to build. Many of us are experiencing burnout as a result of the changes COVID-19 made in our lives. That's why this episode is all about ways to help you cope, to help you improve your energy, your focus, efficiency, financial well-being, while learning many valuable insights in developing and growing in your jobs. So go ahead, grab your cup of tea, and join me in this episode of Empowering Conversations. Hello and welcome to the Empowering Conversations podcast, a place to get inspired, challenged, and empowered by stories of immigrants who build their success from zero. I'm your host, Mehran. Are you tired of quarantine, needing more human connection? I mean, real physical connection, not through Zoom or any other app. And if you're a parent, do you miss dropping your kids at school? Are you tired of dealing with many additional responsibilities you had to pick up? Educating your kid, entertaining them, and even giving them a haircut? Who knew being a teacher was so difficult, right? If you're working, do you want to go back to your office and interact with your team as you did before? Are you tired of excessive email communications and just want to drop at your colleague's office and talk it out? Are you worried about your job, your family's finances and the future? And if God forbids you lose your job, do you feel like there's nobody else that can help you? Let's be honest here. It's tough for all of us. It is even more difficult if you're on a visa or your immigration is in process. Some of you feel exhausted and drained. You can't concentrate most of the time. Between family responsibilities and work, you have no energy or time to think. You're overwhelmed and deeply concerned. You don't see a positive outcome and you're worried about your finances. How long your savings will last, what to buy, what to sell if you need the money, and if you have extra money, what to invest it on. This episode, we're going to talk about solutions, what to do. Because if you've been nodding for the past few minutes, you are burnt out. According to the 2019 Gallup poll, 23% of employees almost always feel burnt out while 44% of them feel it at times. This number is as high as 60% among working parents. Given the current situation, I wouldn't be surprised if that statistic is much, much, much higher. Sometimes we just want to get into that time machine and travel back to September, where everything was fine. How we took that for granted, right? But we can't look back. Burnouts are associated with cardiovascular diseases, obesity, hyperlipidemia, type 2 diabetes, and many more. As you see, it is more serious than you think. A few days back, I was restless. I woke up. I had my coffee. I looked at my to-do list and realized I just couldn't. I took a hot bath meditated, sat in the sun to warm up my cold feet and hands. I took more breaks during the day, did short workout, but gosh, I just couldn't. I just didn't have the energy. I wrote for a few hours, but I wasn't happy. I deleted them all. I avoided replying to the emails. I was in the kitchen eating anything I could get my hands into. I was stress eating, I knew. But that's how I was coping. I wasn't able to get anything done at my standard. In the evening, I looked at my to-do list. And most items were not checked off. Even the circled ones, the urgent, important ones. I felt even worse. The next two days were similar. That's when I realized I was burnt out, just like many of you. Working over 60 hours for the past 13 weeks, coaching clients, interviewing and editing materials for this podcast, in addition to being a good mom, teacher, spouse, 
sister, friend, citizen was taking a toll on me. That's when I made a decision to switch my focus. I changed what I had planned to air today because I knew I wasn't the only one impacted by burnt out. After all, that was what I have been addressing in most of my coaching calls. That was what I talked about with my friends. But personally, I never felt it this deep. It is painful to be burnt out, especially when people need your support the most. Do you know what I mean? Experts believe that the burnout we are feeling as a result of this pandemic is a little different. It is related to decision fatigue. For those of us in the States, we made 40% of our decisions unconsciously following our routines in February. With the outbreak, our routines changed overnight. We needed to decide how much to wash each item after a grocery shopping, what to touch and what not to, where to take our children to, how to help them at school, what to feed them every meal and every snack which Zoom meeting to attend, and among hundreds of emails, which email to reply. And that was mentally straining, right? Now you might be asking, how can we get out of it? How can we be more productive given the new norm? Gosh, how fearful we are of this new norm. I hear you. And that's why this episode is addressing some of your concerns. First of all, take a break. If you can take a few days off and do what you enjoy doing, do it. Do something that energizes you. Something that doesn't necessarily rely on learning. In a few minutes, I will tell you how to find out what nurtures your inner being. But here's what I will be doing. After this episode, I'm taking one month break from podcasting to focus on me to reflect back, and to rejuvenate my creativity. For the first couple of days, I will probably not open my computer. Instead, I will focus on myself. I will focus on my family. I will take long walks. I will go to the beach. I will garden. I will bake with my son, and I will take more pictures. And if he lets me, I will share them with you on my Instagram. That's what you can do as well. Simple, easy things that makes your heart happy. But if you absolutely cannot take a day or two off, then unplug. Unplug from your phone, unplug from your computer, unplug from social media, unplug from news. Unplug from whatever and whoever overwhelms you, at least temporarily, even for a few hours. Don't tell me you can't. All of us can. Now more than ever before, we have to protect our energy and only listen to those that inspire us, those that energize us, those that educate us. So don't wait for permission. Feel free to unfollow, to leave, and to turn off. According to Gary Chapman, author of the famous book series, Five Languages of Love, there are five main love languages. Words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, receiving gifts, and physical touch. So let me repeat that. Words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, receiving gifts, and physical touch. According to him, Everyone has one or two languages, and it is important that we find it and speak to it. I bet most of you don't know your own love language, let alone others. So as you're slowing down and doing less, think about what makes your heart happy. Are you the happiest when you carve out alone time for yourself and walk in nature? Or when you spend time serving others, whether that's through cooking, cleaning, or helping an elderly with grocery shopping. Do you buy gifts for others to make them happy? Or do you hug them? 
These questions should give you hints on what your primary and secondary love language is. Once you find your language, carve out time in your busy schedule on regular basis. Tend to your own needs during unplugged time. Burnout occurs when we are overwhelmed and cannot manage our stress. One of the important contributors to that is lack of self-care. So take good care of your precious self for me, can you? Now I know the perfectionist in you is thinking about the perfect time you do it, the perfect day, the perfect scenario. Don't worry about being perfect. A study published on Frontiers of Psychology in 2018 showed perfectionism as one of the underlying causes of burnout. In my eighth episode, I talked extensively about perfectionism and its impact on our families and children and our growth. Given the situation, you don't have to have a perfect downtime, the perfect work environment. Your kids don't have to be following the class curriculum perfectly. They don't need to be advancing at the same pace they did prior to the outbreak. I'm not saying you let it all go and don't focus on your work, your kids. No, do try your best. Do communicate with your colleagues and teachers the best you can. But if you can't, if you're getting overwhelmed, hire someone. Get the help you need. An assistant, a tutor. Right now, you can find help at very low cost. Plus, many of our friends lost their job, and after their employment benefits are over, they will be struggling to make the ends meet. If you have the financial bandwidth, hire someone to help you and your kids. Not only you'll be creating jobs, but also you're supporting your community. Get out of I can do it all mindset and instead learn to delegate. Something else that is related to perfectionism and it has an impact on our kids these days is the question that most families have regarding screen time. I know most of you are feeling guilty about plopping your kid in front of TV, especially if you need to get something done. Let's be honest. There is no possible way that we can have the same amount of screen time as we did in September. Especially if you're a working parent or have multiple children. I read an article a few days back on why parents shouldn't worry so much about screen time during the pandemic. Head of Developmental Technologies Research Group at Tufts University, Marina Omashi Burse, shared an interesting view. She divides screen time into two types. Playpen or playground, with benefits and limitations associated with each type. According to Burst, playpen is a place that children have access to limited toys or games that are chosen by adults. Although the limitation creates a safe environment, but it limits their communication, freedom, and creativity. Can you think of a screen time activity that has a playpen nature? Do you think playing games on the tablet, watching endless movies, scrolling through social media are playpen activities? Well, they are. On the contrary, playgrounds are open spaces where children can explore, create, and communicate with each other. This is an environment that fosters invention and problem solving, which is beneficial in building children's social, emotional, moral, and language development skills while helping them develop confidence. Now, what are some games with playground nature? Video chatting? Coding? Learning a hobby online? Yes. Doesn't that give you a different perspective? It is your choice what to allow your child to watch and for how long. In the show notes, I provided the original article. But if you haven't listened to our fifth episode, where Doris talks about utilizing technology to improve language and cognitive skills, now it's the time. Especially because almost all of us are raising our kids in a multilingual environment. Now let's see how can we get more work done while our kids are engaged. How to focus on what really matters. 
One of the most important skills you need to improve on during this time is prioritization. Here I'll be talking about Eisenhower matrix in this episode, but there are many other ways. Explore them and use them. Developed by the former president, the matrix is made of four quadrants that helps you decide which task to conquer first. The first step is separating urgent tasks versus important ones. Your urgent tasks are those that give you the urgency to react right away, but they don't actually contribute to your long-term goals. Things like text, email, and news. These are a few examples of urgent tasks that may or may not be important. On the contrary, important ones are those that contribute to your long-term goals. In front of every idea, task, email, write their urgency and their importance. Those that are important and urgent should be addressed as soon as possible, while those that are important but non-urgent should be rescheduled or postponed. For the tasks that are urgent but not important, think about delegation. That's what we talked about earlier. Now, what to do with those that are neither urgent nor important? Drop them as soon as possible. While we're talking about decision making, I know some of us are making important financial decisions at the time. That's why I interviewed Dimitris, aka the Money Man. He is a financial advisor, college professor, and author of Five Ps of Money Management. To tell us what should we do and what are some common big mistakes people make during this historic time. There were some speculations that there's going to be a recession in 2020 or 2021, but I doubt anyone imagined something to this magnitude happening this fast. I'm just curious, if someone hasn't done a whole lot of planning, they haven't prepared for it, what should they do? Here in San Diego, anyway, I'm, I'm assuming your audience is in San Diego. When the wildfire comes to your neighborhood, it's too late to pack your vehicle. Okay, so your portfolio has to be prepared in advance for times when it's going to drop 34% like it did recently. And, and what's really surprising and historic about this drop is not only how quickly it occurred, but how quickly it also recovered. We had the quickest bear market, the fastest bear market in history, down 20% in 16 trading days. And then we had the fastest recovery in history, the fastest bear market, where we go up 20% from the most recent low. So everybody's going to be different, but you know, what, one thing we could all do is take this downtime, you know, take this pause time that's been demanded of us to improve our skills, right? And to learn about, and again, I'm biased because I'm a professor, as we discussed, but to learn about how we can improve our money, how we can improve our career. And it's by listening to this podcast is a very good start. Uh, right. But then once you learn is make a plan for the future, because the future is going to be different. This is, you know, a historically defining moment we're all living through together that a lot of things are going to change. Right. Companies are going to question whether their employees could travel so much. Uh, smaller companies are going to question whether they should stay in business or not. We're all going to question whether we should go out to eat as much. Right. Um, or, or spend as much. But we're all kind of forced to think about our lives in, in, in new ways in preparing for the future. And, and so my, my encouragement is uh, to use this downtime to learn about, you know, the things that you need to know to improve, you know, whatever your situation is going forward. And again, I'm sorry, that's a very general response, but uh, everybody's situation is going to be different. How about... Um places that they can easily save? The first step is documenting exactly what you really spent. So for example, um, I don't know when this program's gonna air, but perhaps starting on June 1st, uh, your audience could say, okay, I'm gonna track for the month of June what I really spend my money on. 
And then I'm going to fill out a worksheet and categorize those expenses into what I call, and again, this is in my book, living expenses, lifestyle expenses, and liabilities. Okay, so basically fixed variable and debt. Okay, what do I pay for my rent or my mortgage? What do I pay for my food? What do I pay for my utilities? What do I pay for my insurance? Those are necessities. Those are fixed costs that are every month about the same. Okay. And then variable or lifestyle expenses are, what do I spend on clothes? Uh, what do I spend on eating out? Not much the past two months, right? On those two categories, right? But those are the categories that are easier to reduce if we decide to. First thing you want to do is download, not a budget worksheet, uh, but what I call money flow. So, so money flow is your monthly cash flow, right? What is your monthly income? What are your monthly expenses? And what I recommend, and this is what I do with students, download the worksheet. Your listeners won't be graded on it, but fill out your monthly expenses, what they actually are, and then add them up. Okay, and that's really the start. Before we could plan, first we have to take inventory. What is the worst decisions that we can make during this time? It is better to be partially right than absolutely wrong. So the other question I was being asked a lot is when do I buy stocks, right? When, when do I buy in? I don't know. Nobody knows, right? But it's better to buy then when the market's going down, even though it goes down more than to be absolutely wrong and sell on March 23rd, like one of my clients wanted to do. And I talked him out of it. Okay. And there was a client that's recently retired. That is the danger zone. That is when you're the most emotionally suspect as far as being fearful and making this lifetime bad decision. And I told that client, look, I'm standing on the bridge with you and I'm telling you not to jump off. And the client basically said, well, thanks for putting it that way. And I actually encouraged him to buy that day. Um, he didn't take that advice, but he took my advice not to sell. And look how fast the recovery has come down. It's mostly because of government intervention in the markets, not only these stimulus payments uh, and these payroll uh, protection programs, but also they are actually supporting the investment markets by coming in with liquidity and actually coming in and buying bonds, which has been unprecedented. They've never done that before. That was historic. So yeah, the worst mistake you can make when you're in it uh, is to sell because you're scared. What I tell my clients all the time to make sure it registers in their long-term memory is I ask them, what are the four magic words that work every time in investing? Buy low, sell high. And so this client that wanted to sell would have done the opposite. He would have sold low. So the other four words that I share, not as frequently, but in a situation like that, uh, he was convinced that the economy was never going to recover. The four most dangerous words in investing, and this I'm quoting from a legendary investor, Sir John Templeton. This time, it's different, right? This time, it's different. Because we know as market historians, as financial advisors, the market has always recovered, and it's always gone on to new highs. But sometimes it doesn't feel like it's ever going to. And for someone that thinks this time it's different, that's a person that cashes out at the exact wrong time and uh, regrets it for the rest of their life. Mm. What are some other common mistakes that people make? Uh, you know, a very common mistake is, uh, and you know, I prefer to look at opportunities and things to do than to prevent mistakes. But preventing mistakes is something that if you know about ahead of time, you can, right? That's why you're asking me. So, so one thing I always say that is in my book is that you don't put short-term money into long-term investments, okay? And let me explain that. So you should have short-term goals under a year, right? Your long-term goals are over five years. I had a client once come in, he wasn't a client, he was a prospective client, and said, I've got $10,000 to invest. This was years ago. And I said, okay, what else do you have? He says, that's all the money in the world I have. And I said, that's not investable. That's your emergency reserve. 
And you know, at the time, 10 years ago, I'm a commissioned salesperson trying to build my business, right? And so I could have sold that person an investment, made my commission, but instead I turned that person away, did the right thing, and said, you shouldn't invest this because you can't afford the risk with that money. So not putting short-term money into long-term investments, it's a mistake. And we saw why between February and March this year, again, when we had that 34% drop in the stock market. College for Financial Planning says we should have an emergency reserve of four to six months of our monthly spending. Not our monthly income, but our monthly spending. So if I spend 5,000 a month, I should have 20,000 to $30,000 in my emergency reserve before I even ever start investing. And of course, for most Americans, that's pretty difficult to do. You know, another question I got a lot, which is a mistake is, uh, and again, this is more like friends that aren't clients contacting me. Hey, should I buy Royal Caribbean Cruise Line here? Or should I buy Exxon Mobil here, right? And so these folks are speculating, which means they're trying to time the market instead of investing in investments that are predictable, that have predictable rates of return. So I'm trying to time when Boeing is going to turn it around, right? Or when Carnival Cruise Line is going to turn it around or whether or not they're going to survive. So a lot of people, and, and I hate to even put it this way, but they're trying to make the quick buck, right? Or they're trying to learn about options trading. With options, you could lose all of your money, right? And so those are very common mistakes. And unfortunately, and it's reality, Mehran, they're so-called financial professionals that encourage people to do these things, mm. right? It's and a level of risk, I bet, right? Yeah, it, you know, it's a black eye to my profession. It's something we deal with, you know, as far as uh, people like myself that are fiduciaries. You know, I'm a fiduciary that's required to act in the best interest of my client at all times. And I'm not saying brokers or commission brokers are bad. Uh, but they have to generate a commission to make a living, right? So, you know, people really, you know, the mistake is not educating themselves in a nutshell. So learning about these things uh, on their own and not being influenced by somebody that may have an ulterior motive. In the show notes, you will find the link to his book and the worksheet that he talked about. I highly recommend downloading his worksheet, especially if you're starting to manage your money a little better. You can even schedule a call, or if you're local, you can pick up his book at his office half price. Now let's see what we can do professionally to save our jobs and continue growing despite the fear of losing income. Last week, I had the honor of interviewing Majda Marque, the founder of Althea DX co-founder of the region's largest contract manufacturer before its merge in 2014, an investor at Alma Sciences, and the first woman inducted into the Connect Entrepreneur Hall of Fame. I will have a full episode on her journey to success as a female founder and leader in Season 2, but as someone who's done many layoffs, I wanted you to hear what she said to me last week. What happened with COVID, the times where we had to make a layoff, we told people, as soon as we get the, the opportunity, we'll get you back, you know, back in. And, and we will, because, uh, I mean, it's very painful. It's painful for the people you uh, lay off. It's very painful for the organization as well, because all of a sudden you don't have the same, uh, you know, enthusiasm, energy, and and teamwork so it's a very painful the decision but you have to do it with compassion and with respect and with the and and be very uh, straightforward with uh, you know with the people who are in this situation it is it is a very difficult thing mm. and from the perspective of someone who's in a danger <clears throat> of losing their job what would you say they can do to mitigate that risk, if anything? Well, I mean, it really depends on, you know, what, what the circumstances are right now. We just every single situation is, um, is totally different. And we have, in a, we have a, a sense of panic going around. I think right now what we have to, to realize, and I don't know if that would be helpful or not, but 
is to realize that we're, we're in the middle of a storm now with COVID. We're really in the middle. And we have to be centered and anchored down and see if we can, you know, keep our health going and, and not lose our mind over that and just become very, very centered and strong and develop that. Develop that by, um, you know, making sure that you don't watch too many news and you don't, you're not around people who are going to put you down. Uh, make the choice to read the uplifting books and, and to really put you in a very good state of, of mind, more resourceful. I meditate every day. I mean, this is something that helps me a lot. I mean, not everyone does that, but there's other ways that can help you be centered and in a, in a good place in these very, very trying times. So that's the first thing you do. I mean, right now, we just the world is changing and we're in the med- middle of a pandemic and we're facing a colossal challenge, all of us. But then at the same time, I think that, you know, after this big storm, we're going to have sunshine again and we're going to have opportunities and we're going to have uh, hope. And, but what we cannot do is try to recreate the past. I mean, I think that the, the new world that we'll see after the pandemic it's going to be different. It's going to be, you know, the jobs that we have right now, some of them will stay, some of them will be different. So I think that, you know, not try not to recreate the past and not to be in a fear mode and, and have a very good group of people around you who are resources. I think more than ever, it's important to have a very good support system, being your family, your friends, your coworkers, people that, you know, you talk to and they make you feel good instead of people who watch the news all day long or and then are are just not very resourceful it's it's a it's a difficult time for for everyone it's a major major time of change wasn't that insightful now a few more tips on career development remember i don't know what your situation at the moment is if you were just laid off or you were in transition If you quit your job and started something new and all of a sudden you found yourself in a mess, whatever that is, please don't use this time to sit and moan. Don't complain. Find a side hustle. Use this time to get ready so that when companies are hiring, you would be the first one to be hired. Strengthen your English. Take online courses. Improve your resume and LinkedIn. There are many tutors and apps available to you for that matter. Keep learning. This is what immigrants do the best. And if you need any support to find out what your next step is, let me know. But if you're among lucky ones that your job hasn't been impacted, make sure you don't take negativity to work. Team morale is something companies are very sensitive to during this time. According to Harvard Business Review, there are 10 reasons winners keep winning aside from their skills. They're in a good mood. They stick around and learn. They work in teams. They focus and they respect others. They create a solid support system and a strong network. They don't work in solitude. They can talk about their achievements without being arrogant. They are determined planners and they continue to implement their strategies. That was a load of information, wasn't it? But remember, after you take care of yourself, after you do all that I said, these are the things that you need to continue working on. I'm not saying that to overwhelm you. I'm just informing you. These are options, choices, that after you take good care of you, you can focus on that. Because after all, these skills will take time to develop, and they're not easy. They cannot be achieved overnight. But with persistence and the right support, all of you can get there. I know I'm leaving you with tons of information. Perhaps you need to listen to this episode over and over again. That's why this episode is longer and more packed with information. I told you about burnout and the importance of taking a break, unplugging, finding your love language, understanding your priorities, ways to manage screen time for your kids if you have one, while putting less emphasis on perfect academic outcome. 
and ways you can enhance your decision making for your financial well-being. Things you can do in case you're worried about your job being affected. As you know, I'm taking one month break to serve you in a different way while caring for my personal need. I know many of you are struggling right now given the situation. That's why during my time off, I will give 50 complimentary one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, no purchase necessary. Also, subscribe to our newsletter so that if you're not ready right now, you don't miss opportunities like this. So that you get updates on our group classes, our blog posts, our interviews, our recent videos. During this time, you can also catch up and finish listening to all 13 episodes we published. They have tons of information, inspiration, and ideas for creation. And while you're there, write me a review. One of my love languages is word of affirmation. I read every one of those comments over and over again, especially when I'm down. A few days back, I read a review that made me laugh. Guess who wrote me a review? Perfectionist Mo. She was the fourth perfectionist Mo I knew since publishing my eighth episode on perfectionism. Thanks, Mo, for writing to me. I'm so thankful to have you, Mina39, Ahu Khanum, Naderi Poor, HTSD, Sina, Rockstar, Homa M, Alisha2020, and IIDISSJD. Thank you for taking the time to tell me what you liked and what I can improve. During this one month, let's stay connected on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. As always, thank you for listening and sharing our podcast. You, my audience, mean the world to me, and I know I will see you and your friends in the next episode of Empowering Conversations, where all of us can learn from successful immigrants one conversation at a time. <music>